Bye. Short bus debate club. It's a bus. Rolling. I can get on board. <laughs> Hello, I'm Darren Jolly. <laughs> it's time to get this short bus started. So let's roll. And on with the show. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of... Oh, yeah. Short bus debate club. <laughs> um, there is the term... You're a day late and a dollar short, and we are a fucking day late. And many dollars short. For that, I apologize. The dollar short is because none of you motherfuckers are paying for this great service that we provide. But, you know, whatever. It's a freebie. Um, so I can't expect to be a dollar ahead. We are men of the people. That's right. Power to. The people on the short bus. Um, so today we are talking about, well, once again, we're always talking about social change. Um, but this one is kind of, I would call it negative social change. And the fact that, you know, since the beginning of time, probably, but definitely things have, have ramped up, you know, over the past couple hundred years um, where they are conditioning us to, well, buy certain things and say certain things and let them do certain things without it bothering us. Um, so, I don't know. I was going to say something else that was going to be brilliant at the beginning of the show, but I can't remember what it was. So It was so, it was so brilliant <laughs> that it actually it, it set on his mind. Yeah, like the whole like, thought set on his mind. I was thinking, that's fucking profound. Um, well, maybe I'll pro-find it later. Um you got any any thoughts on this before I jump on a soapbox or anything? No, no. I mean, I want you to I want you to soapbox it. I mean, the only thing, like when when we started talking about how we were going to uh, approach this, I mean, you were you were talking about the idea that um, we're being conditioned, like, and, and meaning that like uh, you 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 were talking about. So like, you go you go to go to Shake Shack to get a to get a, a meal. Like you, you don't. You don't interact with the human being any longer. You know, you go right. you go to Safeway, and it doesn't matter whether it's the middle of the night or the day. The most that you're ever going to have a, a, a regular teller like opened up, or what is that? What you call cashier. It? Cashier. Yeah. yeah, a regular cashier open up. It is one, and they're always going to defer to the U scan sites. You know, I mean, and there's something about this sort of like. Uh, like this uh, electronification, it's not really like it's it, the the social interactions are becoming fewer and fewer. Like it's it's like we're getting narrowed to the point where if you're if you're going to talk to uh, somebody from a service call, you're going to talk to somebody from a different country that you've never you know, you're never going to see in person, but you're going to have to go through touch number seven if it's with that and then number six and then hit the pound key and then your account plus the pound key you know and then yeah. it's all this sort of like uh digitalized space that's so no, those you, no human contact those those weird phone calls you know where you hit one for this and two for that and and you know whatever and then enter your account number those have kind of been evolving since fuck i can remember doing them like back in the 90s, and, and people were complaining about them. Um, and I don't think people thought of it then. But again, you know, what that does is it's basically taking people out of a job. And with the advent of, of artificial intelligence, these things are getting even smarter to where, you know, they can find a package for you if you're calling UPS. Um if you're looking for tech support, in a lot of cases, they can do, you know, that first level of, of tech support. Um, so, you know, back then, customer service people were losing their job and, and probably didn't even know it. But it's just continually gotten worse. And now, you know, you mentioned the Safeway thing. Um, <laughs> and, and I haven't heard... 
any of these cashiers complain and and the self scan fuck if you go to to Walmart they've got I don't know 15 20 of the motherfuckers and they're always lit up and there's a line for them but again there's only you know one or two cashiers in the store um Target's got them uh obviously the grocery stores King Super Safeway or or Kroger um you know um, you brought up something in a few episodes back about drive-up windows that would re- have people remotely negotiating. I mean, that's yeah. not good. So hey, is there any that you've seen that actually are doing that yet? No, no. And like I said, that article that I read was a completely, it, it was a test market that okay. they were doing. But I mean, the technology is there um, with the use of, of cameras and the fact that, you know, you can put a card in without even interacting with the person. Um, the, the technology is there. So it wouldn't surprise me if that technology was being used somewhere. So just before we go too far down the, this is the fucked up part where we are. I just want to kind of walk us through at least the, the timeline from, uh, retail, maybe to give us a little perspective. So, you know, like when we started using these mechanisms, and they've started to be introduced. Well, kind of. I was even even going to go farther back because that's why I said the last two hundred years. Mm-hmm. So, the first vending machine ever was um, invented, and I didn't write down this fucking name, but it was invented in eighteen thirty three, and that first. Um, vending machine was generally put on train platforms and it was selling um, postcards, envelopes, and note paper. So it was correspondence. You know, hey, I'm on a fucking trip. I uh, wish you were here, or I'm really fucking glad you're not. Were they were they selling <laughs> stamps and stuff like that even too? Or? Well, it didn't say anything about stamps, and that's because I don't know if. How close is the county? That county is the rock. Right, and since it was in London, yeah. I don't know because that's an entirely different thing. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um. So then, in the U.S., the first vending machine, at least according to my research, um was put up in 1888. So 50 years later, some company called the Thomas Adams Gum Company was promoting their Tutti Frutti gum line. And you'd think that since it was called Tutti Frutti, all of them would be like fruit flavors, but they had like fucking chocolate gum and shit. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, well, like, but, gum, like gumballs, then basically, like, what, or what, what I'm pretty okay. sure it was sticks okay. from the look of the machine. Weird. Um, but you know, people like that fucking blackjack gum too. So, chocolate gum probably isn't too far from, I mean, gross is gross, right? Gum you like is going to come back in style. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, Twin Peaks, that, that was blackjack. So. Um, this doesn't have jack shit to do with a vending machine or robots, Mm -hmm. but it kind of shows, you know, steps were taken. So, and strangely enough, it was here in Denver. Um, June 10th of 1964, the big top gas station decided that they were going to do self-serve gas. In 19, wow, how the fuck were they going to do that? Well, self serve gas, so you still had to pay. Oh, you, you know, it, you, you, but you, but you, you just car, you pumped cash. it yourself, okay, so and then you went and paid. Okay. Because prior to that, I he mean, it was the full service guy. He came out and he checked your fucking oil, and he, you know, checked your air pressure and and filled up your tank. Why is it still le- ill- like legal and why? Is- I mean, Oregon and stuff. Some places. So Oregon so. did it strictly for unemployment reasons. Okay. So it was to generate more jobs. Uh-huh. Um, there are other there are other states though that still adhere to what are they what you what do you not what do you call them the uh, well the only one I knew of was Oregon okay. but 
There might be more than more okay. than the one. But it was to it was to generate labor opportunities for people. Okay. Yeah, because I mean the the job market in Oregon just completely fucking sucked. So they figured, you know, lots of people drive, lots of people need gas. So let's create, you know, another hundred thousand jobs. Um, but the machines that we were talking about at Safeway and and whatever. So those were actually developed in the early 90s. Um, some dude named Dr. Howard Schneider created them, and he called them the service robot. And it's hysterical. Like, I never thought pictures of the 90s would look to me like pictures of the 60s. <laughs> but they totally did. Like, there, it showed this chick scanning her thing, and it was... Well, I mean, I guess it has been that long. That's been a long time ago. You, um, you but, remember beat, Offbeat Records? Yeah. Okay, so like right next to that, there, somebody opened an arcade for a little while that failed uh, in in the 90s. Offbeat down by Crescendo yeah, Music yeah, yeah, exactly. and the laundromat. Yeah, there was a, there was, it was just a three. Yeah, they closed the laundromat, and this person turned that into a video arcade, right? So he got, it was the first time I'd ever seen one, a virtual reality uh, video game. But you had to like, sit in it and have this thing come down over your head and dude and it was all pixelated i mean it was just like a fucking red stick yeah, um it was so it was so 1960s i mean it, it really just looked like this thing like we're more like you'd imagine what it would look like than what it really but that's you know my first virtual reality moment well it was and so I, w I wouldn't really call it virtual reality of course i didn't see the same exact thing but i remember they had something at, I can't remember if it was Major Video or if it was Blockbuster, but one of those, because Blockbuster ended up buying Major Video, um, they had the helmet thing, and I put it on, and it was just this guy. I mean, I wouldn't call it virtual reality. I would just call it the screen closer to your fucking eyes, because um, it was shitty graphics. I mean, it was horrible. Um, it was like, if you, if you do want to call it virtual reality, it was like Pong. Not not because of the gameplay, but just because of the graphics. The level of, yeah, the, tech, the very low technical. Yeah. The, the one I did was the same, but there was a, a sort of like a first-person shooter quality to it, to where you were kind of feeling like you were closer to it. And I got sick. I was like, get this fucking thing off my head. So... <laughs> I've never been good with first-person shooters anyway. I just can't, I can't do with it. But I'm done. Fuck this. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I mean, we're, we're really just conditioning things for, for us to, you know, now check out our own groceries. And that that may not seem like a big deal um of course it's a big deal to old people because they can't ever figure out the technology um but it's a big deal because it's it's going to affect the economy maybe in a positive way because they're actually forecasting um 4 billion dollars in sales by 2024 so that's a $4 billion market in two years from now um, with 468,000 of those things deployed globally, okay. um, which is $4 huge. $4 billion in self-service machines is what you're talking about. Those. Okay. Right. Okay. But the problem is, is that there's $4 billion in sales here. Mm -hmm. But what does that equate to labor, labor as far as, as well. yeah. you know, we've conditioned ourselves out of X number of jobs. Mm -hmm. I mean, because like you said, at, at Safeway, there's always just the one person there to help the handicapped mm -hmm. or, or somebody with so many groceries that they can't go through self-serve. Mm -hmm. um, but if you look at the way the store is lined up, you know, there's, there's 14 service lines. Mm -hmm. And if they've got one cashier for 14 of them, then, well, essentially 13 people aren't working there anymore. That, that, that really would be like the, the, the turning of the tide. <laughs> when, because we still, when we go into a store, whether it's Walmart or, you know, not, not, uh, like, a tech, not, not like a Best Buy or something like that, because they are already sort of like 
the way they're set up is different in the first place. But you still go into a King Supers and there's 14. There, there's 14 places where you don't do self checkout, and then the two lanes that you do do the self checkout. Of course, there's eight or 12, you know, spots that you can pick from. But there's still all of this space that you use for. So when you start to get to the point where they totally start to eliminate it, and where you literally have only three lanes left or something like that, which we still we haven't gotten to that that point, but it is. It seems like it's right. Yeah, it's it's the next. It would be the well, next. Well, I mean, step. Costco is even doing it yeah. now, and yep. Costco that's kind of a pain in the ass because you've got all these huge fucking boxes, and again, old people don't know how to use the technology anyway. So you have to stand there and watch them struggle to get their fucking and somebody comes over there and twenty eight thousand rolls of paper towels out of the thing so that they can <laughs> scan it. And somebody comes over and ends up doing it for them anyway. So right. It's not really a self checkout. We yeah, when we go to Costco we use the because it's quicker. Yeah. Know? So um and you know there's so even before Amazon did what they're doing now, I read an article, you know, way back when, because I'm I'm always kind of reading about technical shit. And they were talking about, you know, having these smart carts where basically you would put your credit card in and with the use of weight and barcodes and everything else, that cart would know what you had in it and then there's no reason to even go through self-checkout because you've got this smart cart. Well, Amazon is kind of doing something like that with their Amazon Go stores. Mm -hmm. And now they've got a total of 29 of them, I would say, around the country, but it's not really. There's a few in California. There's a few in Washington. Um, New York actually has the majority of the 29. Uh -huh. Um, I think there's one in Chicago, um, so Illinois has got one, but, you know, the majority are, are between New York, California, wow, sorry, I'm, I'm using hand signals here, and I just put New York and California next to each other, but New York, um, Washington, and California have the majority, and then I think, like I said, there's one in Illinois. Okay. Um, and that is, do you, are you familiar no with idea. the concept? I have no idea what the Amazon page is. Or well, it's, it's just called Amazon go. Uh -huh. So the idea is that you just go in and you go out. There's no fucking cashier, no nothing. I mean, there's somebody there to help you if you need help. But the main thing that they're there to help do is say restock an item if it's not on the shelf. So so are you doing the the purchasing through like your like a, a like a mobile device that you have or do they have something that you pick up as you like walk in the store that you'd scan and I'm pretty sure out? it's all done through the Amazon your Amazon account. Oh, um but it's between a combination of like pressure pads and cameras and whatever. How do they stop shrinkage? I mean like as far as theft, uh -huh. I have no idea, dude. Uh -huh. Maybe that's what that one person that's stuck in the shelves is also there to do. Or that you have somebody up above uh, eye in the sky that's – so you security would be – and, that, of course, this world that we move into, security is always going to be – you might lose you have seven people checking out, but you have two people that are – still there keeping an eye on well and maybe who knows if you know you grabbed one thing and and tried to be slick and you actually grabbed two uh -huh. maybe a fucking alarm goes off and a bunch of fucking people tackle <laughs> you or maybe a fucking laser comes out and zaps your balls <laughs> <laughs> so did you see at, at king supers i don't know if Trevor's was doing this all over the place but in, in 2020 they they uh piloted a program where you go in and you carry it, take this little scanner around with you and you, you scan stuff as you put it in the cart and you check out and you just, you know, you, you just leave. Okay. Well, that's right along the smart cart yeah. idea. Uh -huh. um, I didn't realize they, they had done something. It was like only that. there for about three or four months, but they were they and they kept trying to give incentives for people to do it too. So. Dude, I would have fucking jumped on that. I mean, why, if you're already 
having to check yourself out anyway. And I know they probably didn't have the self-checkout no. available then. But I mean, if you gave me the choice between a cashier, self-checkout, or the cart knows what the fuck I've got and I can just leave, I'm taking the cart knows what I got and leaving. Um... I don't want to be in the store any longer than I have to be. I know that for a lot of people, it is some sort of social thing. Like my aunt, my aunt knew everyone at her King Supers and she could sit there and talk to those cashiers for, you know, ever. Uh Um, And I know that, like my mom talked about one of her neighbors knowing everybody at, at Walmart. Right. So I think to some people it, it there is some like social, social thing. Yeah. Um, maybe because they're, they're lonely, nobody's at home or they just like to shoot the shit. Uh-huh. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I mean, seriously, if you go back to the 1833 thing, then we've really been conditioning ourselves to do this for a long time. Well, so if you're a person who, like, you, you do this and then all that stuff goes away, you're, you're going to have no social interactions. I mean, my grandma used to go with my mom to Costco and my grandma was like that too. She knew fucking everybody, right? But if she's in a position to where She's just going to be this old lady that goes, gets her shit, and fucking comes home. She'll never have any interactions with anybody if she's not calling somebody on the phone, you know? So that's, it is kind of, and I don't know. I mean, the res- like consumption or going out and shopping, it's not the responsibility of a, of, of a shopping space to provide people with social interaction. But it is curious to think about how, how much of our social interactions go through you know, going to places like that, like at the post office, I know these mother, I, you know, I know their whole families now, you know, I know about people that are in their families that have died. I know, you know, their kids that there's this lady that came in the other day. I've known her son since he was fucking in eighth grade. And now he's uh, graduating from college this year. And, you know, I mean, that's just. See, and I never really thought of shopping or, or even the post office that way. But if, if you think back to, you know, we'll call it like a Norman Rockwell type place, you know, this, this small city, everybody's fucking ice skating and everything, you know, there's, there's a five and dime. And then there's the, the marketplace where you go and get your produce and shit. And there might be a butcher shop and everybody knows everybody. And there's this sense of community there. Well, if you, if you take that, then yeah, we're fucking, we have, conditioned ourselves out of community so now you know a lot of the reason people that i've talked to end up going to church or going back to church is because of that sense of community that's interesting um so maybe and i i don't think that this is the case as far as, you know, some conspiracy to drive people back to the church. But really, from the sound of it, the fucking post office and your local whatever religion you happen to be, you know, whether it's a a mosque or a church or temple, whatever, those religious organizations and the government organization of the post office are the only places where people can get that sense of community anymore. They're, they're trying to do it to us too. You know, I mean, it's funny, like uh, in relation to the, the uh, vending machines, they had the stamp machines forever, but they got, they got rid of those. And I, I'll have like, you know, old ladies come in. Why don't you guys have those vending machines? I, I, you know, I've been I, like I've been working on the window since you know 2011, and we haven't had one of those vending machines in there. I was like, but you can go use the self service kiosk, you know. And they don't they don't like that because the the technology of it in, intimidates some of them. Not always, you know. And I'll show them kind of like how to go through it. But uh, um, they are trying to uh, like they want us like if the line's long. 
because they they want us to you know have not keep people in line for you know so send them over to the self service kiosk you know but I, I so the self service kiosk isn't a stamp machine it's actually a computer they kiosk and they can print stamps or postage, postage yeah huh? they can pay for their PO box they can pay for PO boxes remotely so I could get a PO box and. Orlando, Florida, you put in the zip code. And blah, 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 they can blah. track packages, whatever. Yeah, they can. Yeah, all of these things through the, yeah. It's, uh, so essentially, it's the fucking USPS website in the kiosk with, with, with uh, the credit card machine. Yeah, and with, with I mean, there are certain technical edges that, that they can, because you need, you know, like uh, if somebody comes in and they're having a problem and a package is bouncing back and forth, there are databases that I can get into where I can catch a photo of, and they can't get access to something like that. But the, the general stuff, yes, they, they can do. Okay. So they're, they're knocking that. And again, I never, never thought about that sense of community. I always thought, and, and I'm kind of jealous of, you know, somebody from back in, in the twenties or thirties where, not necessarily everybody knew everybody, but where, you know, doctors actually gave a shit about what was wrong with you. Yeah. Um, you know, they, they weren't turning you over as a, a patient. Um, yeah, the Doc Hollywood stuff, yeah. If, yeah. if somebody said hi, mm -hmm. it wasn't just because, you know, they happened to catch your eye by accident. You know, they were genuinely saying hello. Yeah. Um, so I guess I've always been kind of jealous of that, even though I've never seen it uh, except on shows. It's kind of hard to imagine on, on, on some level because that when you, those smaller organic communities, I mean, like everybody's up in your shit. I mean, that's one thing that I wouldn't love, you know, but having said that, like where my, in Deer Trail, you know, where my family did their shit on my dad's side, um, the Jolly store was there and they ran the post office. That was where the post office ran out of that store, you know? So like in little places like that, the stores that, you know, the, the, the community stores and the post offices that accompanied them. And the, when they didn't have like a freestanding post office, there are a bunch of them that do have the freestanding post offices. I wonder if maybe that's why the post office is, is that sense of community? Because I know um, my mom's aunt and uncle ran a general store and the post office was, either right next to it or in that general store yeah, also. Uh -huh. So maybe that's why these older people especially are, are making that connection and thinking, well, fuck it, Darren's my friend because he's at the post office. And <laughs> when I was a kid, everybody knew everybody at the post office and you could get a fucking pickle and a Coke and a bag of peanuts. <laughs> I keep telling people that we're going to, we're going to get a, alcohol you know so we have a bar in the corner so they can get drinks at the end of the day you know? yeah that wouldn't be bad yeah, I think so too. and especially when the line's real long you know you could have a cocktail waitress or that fucking lady because that's something they got rid of too you know the cigarette lady cigars cigarettes gum and she'd just walk around with that little basket attached right underneath her tits so she could sell like e-cigarettes now instead you know right Vapes. Vapes, yeah. Vapes, weed, joints. <laughs> That's yeah. Gum. Well, yeah. Mushrooms. Psilocybin. <laughs> we're we're in Denver. <laughs> so, so you know, we kind of talked about the the nice stuff, but I even though it's it's not really nice, hopefully, you know, these people will start to think about things like that because I mean it's it's gotten to where really now, I mean, there are more self-service kiosks at fast food restaurants than there are actual cashiers. And I remember back in the 90s, um, the Arby's on like Broadway and Littleton Boulevard had those things. It was a just a touchscreen computer in the, the middle, and there were like three or four of them, and then there were a couple of regular registers. Well, apparently that was too early and people hadn't been conditioned properly because they got rid of them fairly quick after they had installed them. But now any fast food you go into, um, 
that I can think of. I mean, they all have, and they're like, they're stacked in the middle of the lobby where there used to be a place for people to wait in line. Now it's a bunch of kiosks. So there's, I mean, it's great because there's no reason to wait in line. But, but I'll tell you, so I was trying to get home to get Annie something to eat. And I was so, and I went into a Shake Shack and I, I had a 20. I didn't, I did not, have, I had like four bucks in my fucking bank account, right? Yeah. And they're like, we don't take cash. And I'm like, they said, you have to do everything either through your uh, ordering it online or ordering it through the kiosk. I'm like, are you no cash? Are you fucking kidding me period you know and we're you know shake shack sucks anyway dude but she eats the shroom burgers so ah not, not uh, those not those kind of shroom burgers guys. right <laughs> but yeah when you got a vegetarian that's something that's an option to where i but i couldn't even fucking get her food because i didn't have a way i mean now i need to have get them to have an atm so i can fucking put cash in my account and get her the goddamn shroom burger all the shit yeah, of course I haven't been to one in a couple of years, but the Shake Shacks I've been to, they all took cash. Not anymore. Ever, I went to I went to four of them that day, and the last one I finally found one to deposit. I found a, a service center where I could deposit my money and got her her food. They all were only they had the one at Park Meadows, the one that was uh, um, on in Edgewater. Um, I was in Highlands Ranch when I started, so the one in Highlands Ranch. Dude, you just drove like 40 fucking miles for a was, shitty bro. No, I didn't go. It was on the way doing, I was doing things while I was, and it was, so in the end, yes, at the end, I was fucking, because I ended up at the one over by, kind of, kind of by Cotton Mills, but I was bound and fucking, I was going to get it. At that then time. round trip, you ended up doing like probably closer to 65, 70 miles. But that's. Neither here nor there. No, well, it's here and there actually, but <laughs> <laughs> but like I said, I was in Highlands Ranch doing things, and I kept getting closer and closer to home. And by the time I, I just went down Colfax and finally got the fucking one that I wanted, so or finally got what I wanted for her, so that she could get to work and eat her damn shroom burger. Wow, frustrating. So no shit. Yeah. Well, no, I I mean I know I've been well that. Yeah, it's it's crazy the way things have changed. So, of course, I, I've got to talk shit about, you know, the government and people being stupid and saying, well, it's okay for them to watch because I'm not doing anything wrong. So, another way that they've been conditioning us for a really long time is with cameras. No big deal. They put a camera up at the intersection here. Um, I remember reading an article, and this is a long time ago, so don't bother trying to search it because I, I can't remember what the headline was or who wrote it or anything else. But basically, at one time, the UK had more closed-circuit television than the United States, and it was some shit like there was one camera for every six people or 16 people or, or something like that. I mean, they were watched heavily. Um, now, China is the most watched. Like, out of the billions and billions of cameras out there, 54% of them are in China. But it's it's not just the cameras. You know, now they're... they're 54% of the total cameras that are observing civil society, the public, are in China. Correct. Yes. Sorry, I should have made that more. No, clear. no, no. I just wanted to re make sure that that's a fucking. It's a huge fucking like number, yeah. dude. And I didn't write down any of the the um, numbers from China because there there were a lot of them. I mean, out of the global top ten, the only city that wasn't in China was London. Uh -huh. Um, and the London UK still has, they still have at least one locale that's huge on them. Yeah. So London has one camera for every 14 residents. So the reason that I, so the, the article that I read previously was the UK and I'm, I'm guessing 
that they were just talking about Wales and Ireland and and England, Scotland. Yeah. Um, but that's still, I mean, that's you know a bunch of countries that are again being watched heavily. So with London having one camera for every fourteen residents, that's still a fucking lot, dude. What was what was the number in China for for fifty four percent? I can't remember just because I mean, cause that number to me was staggering enough because they were talking about, you know, all of these billions and billions of cameras out there and 54% of them being in China. Um, Sounds like there's a camera for everything. Yeah. One for, <laughs> one, well, I, when I ask you about Chengdu and how to uh-huh. spell it. Yeah. Um, you said one for two at that one, didn't you? It was two two people per camera. Well, no, I said that there was a half a camera for every resident in Chengdu. Which makes it the same. Thing. Well, right, but I mean, just think, I that is fucking mind boggling to think that, you know, if you've got a house of four people, then there's probably two cameras on you at any given time. Yeah. If you're if you're going out and soliciting, you know, you're you're and they want to, you know, hold it over your head. Uh, your picture is going to be somewhere, and they can use that, you know. Well, and that's some kind of funny shit. So I uh, went to a website called Kim Commando, and Kim is with a K, and Commando is with a K. Um. There was an article written by some dude named Albert Curry, and he wrote it on the 22nd of April this year. Um, but it was the top 10 United States cities that are are being surveilled. Um, number one is Atlanta, and they have 48.93 cameras per 1,000, which is a huge fucking disparity between number one and and number two, because number two is Philadelphia and they have 17.72 cameras per 1000 people. Um, and then number three is Denver and they have 16.88 cameras per 1000 people. Um, and that those numbers come from, an internet tech company called Comparatech and data from the U S census. Um, the, the 10th on the list was Fresno and they've got 8.85. Uh, it was weird cause Las Vegas, it says they've got 15.67 cameras per 1000 people, but I don't think they're including casino yeah. cameras in that number. Uh-huh. Um, now here's something that I found out that I didn't know. So Amazon has some kind of camera. I think it's called sidewalk and it's basically an internet of things type of thing like ring. Okay. Um, and then of course, everybody seems to have a fucking ring doorbell. Yeah. Well, these cocksuckers at police departments globally are gaining access without even asking the owner's permission to the ring doorbell and, you know, pulling, pulling data from it. Now you could say that they were doing it because, you know, across the street, a house was burgled. So they pulled that info to help them prosecute it. I don't think that's the case. How are they, how are they gaining access? Beats the fuck out of me. I mean, Ring has a cloud. Yes, I mean, I, I, I can see theory. Yeah, but like, somebody hacks into that space where they can. They're not hacking into it. I, I'm pretty sure that Ring has said, okay, they you guys are it. law enforcement. Here is your credentials. Wow, that's, uh, that's 
Well, and that's why I was saying the conditioned part. You know, they, all of these people said, oh, well, they've got cameras on the corner and that camera on the corner helped them solve the fucking crime. And I want a camera to help solve a crime if anything happens at my house. So I'm getting a ring doorbell. And so now all of these fucking dildos are buying ring doorbells. And all it's doing is shoveling on the shit pile. I mean, dude. And again, so artificial intelligence helps with facial recognition. And this shit is getting so good that really if they wanted to, you know, I, I mean, I don't know for sure, but I'm guessing everybody down the block has a ring doorbell. So they can just watch me. They can fucking figure out how long my gait is. They can see if I've got a fucking limp, if I'm fucking chewing gum, all of that shit. And I don't know if you're aware of this, but I talked about that shit in my book in 2014. <laughs> um, and it's, it's all coming to fruition. <laughs> so... No, it's interesting what you're saying because if, if, if you have an if you have an intelligence position that has like like biometric capabilities, all they need to do is have access to those various different data points, right? Which is what a, a camera becomes at that point in time. So when you like you have those numbers that are there, if it's sixteen, you know, per one thousand, that begs the question: Is that sixteen per one thousand, including you know the fact that everybody and their fucking mom has put rings on? Or are we not even talking about that? And that not, I, I'm assuming yeah. that not. That's my point. Yeah. So, but at the same time, if 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 the website for Ring gives access to these intelligence agencies, they can sit there and run their bar, you know, their bar, their their accumulation, you know, biometric data positions, and and basically like profile everybody. Well, and here's the thing. So, okay. Um, there's a city in India called Hyderabad. I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. They installed I, I a... I bet you're not pronouncing it correctly. Maybe I'm not. I don't Sorry. Know. <laughs> <laughs> so, they installed a thing called Command and Control Center. And that Command and Control Center... Basically, that's what it's called. Yes, it's <laughs> it's pulling data from I, like sixty thousand. Um, oh no, sorry, six hundred thousand cameras around the city. Um, they did. Um, Amnesty International did a study on a couple of different neighborhoods, and in one case, over. 50% of the neighborhood was covered in cameras, and then another 62% was covered in cameras. Well, those 600,000 cameras around the city are going back to this command and control center, and then that command and control center is where all of the artificial intelligence is being parsed, and, you know, this is what we do. So I don't know what the city of Denver calls their command and control center, but now, you know, those 16.88 cameras are being parsed into the command and control center, whatever it's okay. fucking called. Um, and then they've got the ring doorbells feeding directly into the command and control center. Uh, my guess is because of the way these different municipalities work now, um, you know, the city of Littleton and the city of Aurora, their cameras are feeding directly in. Um, it, probably Facebook posts and shit like that are, are feeding in um, so that they truly know what the fuck we're doing and when the fuck we're doing it at all times. And we have been conditioned all the way through to where... I mean, I don't know. Can you find a person or can you find more than, say, a handful of people that aren't at this table that that bothers? I mean, I, I think that most people 
just to like it to be on my control. So so I, I just I just accept it, you know. But one thing that uh, that this makes me think about um, in relation to observation and, and conditioning is, you know, there was all kinds of talk about, you know, whether Snowden was an, was an agent, whether he was not an agent, blah, 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 blah. But there's no doubt that once that NSA information got out into the world, no matter who he was working for or working with, whether he was telling the truth or not telling the truth, is immaterial. The moment that it happened, everybody in the world knew that everything that you do through a digital device has a permanent record put on it somewhere. If that information is... I, I think you're maybe giving people the benefit of the doubt because most of the people that I... like, I'm not saying that they know it. I'm just saying that, that it, you're in a world now where you just accept that that fact is a reality. You, I'm not even saying that they understand it or that they think about it or that they're that they're meditating on the question. But the fact is true that everything that we do is there now. And and everybody in the world knows it. They should know it. You know, they don't. I mean, you, like with this stuff, I mean, people don't, you know, they don't think about the fact that the cameras are there. They don't think about the fact that there's these databases that are taking all the information that's being funneled in, you know, from those cameras and from those various other you know, activities that you engage in, whether it be going on Facebook or Instagram or, you know, all of the different things that you do. Um, uh, he, he, he who shall not be named got his Twitter account back today. So um, certainly his, his activity will be being uh, monitored very closely, not to say that it, uh, you don't have millions of people monitoring it anyway. But uh, the point is, is that all these different spaces, of course, nobody... Most people, unless you're crazy like we are, they, you know, they don't spend their time staring at the sun because they know that it's going to burn their fucking eyes out. But you and I, we just tend to sort of like just continue to look at it. And then we look over at this other sun and then we look over at this other sun. But I think there's another component of that. And that is the fact that, you know, we've also been conditioned to completely fucking lose our attention span and not that it was ever great to begin with but we've managed to whittle it down as a society to where it's like 35 40 seconds i mean and that is all because of facebook and fucking snapchat and now tiktok, TikTok yeah, and sure. and all of these things so you know we're we're coming up close, and I just looked, and and my my laptop's about to die, so I want to make sure, and and we get everything that that we need to say said. Um. So in the United States, according to the Bureau of Labor, um, there's going to be well, there were 85 million cameras in 2021 throughout the United States that are, you know, municipal or, or governmental, um, they anticipate a growth rate between 21 and 30% uh, to 2022. And obviously I don't have those numbers. Um, if what we're saying bothers you about the, the facial recognition on all of the cameras, Amnesty International has a uh, project going called Ban the Scan. Um, there's also a group in Europe called Article 19, and they work closely with Amnesty International on the, the Ban the Scan thing. Um, so there, there are things that we can do. I mean, maybe, to some degree, so probably their, their not. Their goal is to... To stop the facial recognition and, and at least the invasion of our privacy. Uh -huh. Um, but it's a lot of that biometric stuff. Like, you know. Fuck yeah! Like they uh, they've got the. You need to check out the Amnesty International website. They've got this thing. So the NYPD between 2016 and 2019 used facial recognition from the cameras that are set up all over the the city, and there are a lot of them. And and you can check this interactive website out. It's really kind of cool. But they prosecuted 22,000 cases in those three years with the, the use of facial recognition. Over half of those were in 2019. Um, so 
you can see the numbers are are growing exponentially. It's really curious how uh, rhetorically we were so critical. Of, we continue to be critical of of, of China and China's uh, relatively repressive activities through their state apparatuses, apparati, um, and how critical we were of the Soviet Union, how critical we were of the German Stasi, um, and how uh, easy it us is for us to just continue to turn our heads and just not at least uh, at least be aware that this stuff and, and, and you know the, the boy if the Soviets had this this kind of power you know well that's I think that's because of the media I mean the media again is being controlled by whoever right? But they're not going to get on and go, oh, yeah, by the way, the United States sucks and we're fucking doing all this facial recognition shit. And we're actually almost as bad as China. Um, they have more cameras, but we have more whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I interrupted you while no, you were finishing the thought. It's, 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 I mean, ultimately, I mean, I never chalk it up. I mean, it's it's the entire apparatus of social reproduction. I would argue, but that's that's we that's that's a different discussion for a different day. I mean, we're uh, the point. Obviously, was just that uh, we we have these ideas in our head about freedom. Uh, but in as it plays out when it comes to stuff like this, we've we've totally abandoned any concept uh, of uh, of freedom. It's all just talk. It's not honest. It's it's uh it's just an exercise and you know going out and having you know Trump rallies or something like that, which is just a bunch of bullshit, right? So, I thought you were gonna call him the Cheeto or the yeah, orange sorry, guy. Yeah, oh, he he who shall not be named. Right. Rallies. So. <laughs> um. So I mentioned that Kim Commando site before, um, and I need to check it out some more, but they've got a couple of things on there that are really kind of cool, and I didn't have time to check them out, but maybe you guys, you know, the six of you, if you want to, can, <laughs> can do it. Um, there's actually an app you can pull down if, if you read this same article and just look up, you know, most surveilled cities. Um, where you can use it to see if there are hidden cameras in your Airbnb or your hotel room or, or whatever, so that you can see if you're being watched. Um, there was also another app and anyway, there, there are some cool apps on there and I don't know who Kim Commando is. I don't know if she's, you know, extremely conservative or if she's extremely liberal all I know is that I read a fucking article that sourced a couple of websites that I am familiar with and I use. And so, you know, it, it is what it is. Take it for what it's worth. Um, hopefully this shit starts to bother somebody at some fucking point. Um, but this bus is coming to the last stop for this ride. <laughs> um Darren, any last one, two things? No, we'll we'll we'll, we'll be back soon enough. So yeah, um, are we? We're doing Rock and Roll Hall of Fame for the light the one, right? Yeah. Uh huh. Any any ideas what we're doing Monday or Friday? Uh, I, 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 okay, yeah. fuck it. I'm not gonna put any pressure on you because I have no idea, and we're already a day late and a dollar short. So. <laughs> We, um, we should be on time this week, though. Well, I mean, the one, the late one this week is my be fault. On time. No, but the one, the, the the Friday one, because we need to do a little bit more research on it, though. We're gonna do that. The, oh, do you want to do yeah, that? Yeah, okay, so yeah, we're gonna do uh, an episode on the. It's called, Akla, and it's the, American Indian Child Welfare Act. Aqua. It's, it's, it's about how the the sovereign positions of, of uh, Native American lands is being uh, effectively challenged by uh, a power. couple of states, yeah, yeah. and how we've been stealing fucking Indian kids forever. Because I I don't know, do white people just like Indian kids? Were they using them as slaves? Or I, I, I mean, I think that maybe it's more just kind of like what we'd said about. Uh, uh, 
the white guilt Prima, thing. Prima Nocturna, you know, like, uh, you know what the problem with Braid Scots is? They're just too many, too many Scots, you know? They, yeah, they're trying to, to kill uh, a, a heritage by by essentially removing people from it and getting them properly socialized. You know, that's big scare quotes, <laughs> properly socialized within uh, the existing system of power. So, Which is too bad, because if I could move into the Southern Ute res- Reservation, I'd do it in a fucking heartbeat. God damn, I love it down there. Sorry, I so, started to reminisce. That'll be Friday, but we, we'll, we'll come up with something for Monday in the meantime. You know, we, we can always, we, Brian and I can pretty much bullshit from here to eternity. So, <laughs> but we did want to have, I'm on vacation this week from work, so it, it, it'll be a good week for us to have one where we can spend some more time doing a lot more substantial research. So, so rock and roll, aqua, and a fucking surprise for all. Mystery Monday. Monday. Um, seven two zero three three four roll. Yeah, short bus debate club at yahoo.com. Thanks again. Get off this bus. Adios.